Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our sixth lesson on the ninth topic of Form 3 work, which is called quantity of heat. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that you will never fail until the day you will stop trying. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at experimental determination of the latent heat of vaporization. So the apparatus that you need, one, you need an ammeter for detecting uh, the current through the heater. You also need a voltimeter for measuring the amount of voltage through the heater. Of course, you also need a clock for detecting the time taken for the steam to condense. Then we have a variable uh, resistor, of course, for varying the amount of voltage and the current that is flowing through the heater. So in this particular experiment, the first step is simply to close the switch so that the current uh, or the electrical energy flows through this particular heater. Remember that the heater usually has a heating coil, which is usually made of a material of very high electrical resistance, such that when electrical energy flows through uh, the heating coil, which is a material of very high electrical resistance, all the electrical energy will be lost in form of heat, or the electrical energy is converted to heat energy. So that particular heat energy is used to heat this particular water until it gets at its boiling point. So immediately the water starts boiling, we usually start the clock so that the clock can, can help us to detect the time taken for the condensed, that is the steam, to condense back to the liquid state. So remember when the water molecules are heated, they are going to gain kinetic energy. That means they have now the ability to move uh, from one point to another. Also when the water molecules are heated, they'll become less denser. Remember that hot molecules we usually have low density. So because they become less denser and they have gained kinetic energy, the molecules will move from the liquid state and they'll move upward to the gaseous state. So as the molecules move, they come and attach, uh, they attach themselves against this particular delivery, delivery tube, which is uh, within the Lebic condenser. So remember the main role of the Lebic condenser is simply to accelerate the rate of condensation of the steam that has been obtained from the heated water. So when the steam attaches itself against this particular wall, then we have the cold water running through the Lebic condenser. Then from the upper side, we are collecting the warm water because all the heat has been used to condense the steam. So the steam is condensed, hence it drips through this particular uh, the condenser that is through this particular uh, beaker. So a clean beaker is used to uh, collect the condensed water. Remember, this tube is usually called a Lebic condenser. That is, it is named, uh, that is, it is called a Lebic condenser in honor of uh, a German organic chemist by the name Justus von Lebig, who made greater contribution to the discovery of the Lebig condenser. So it owns the name Lebig condenser from the name of a German chemist, that is organic chemist by the name Justus von Lebig. So basically, this is best done by electrical method of heating and condensing steam. So when a steady state is reached, the liquid drips into the beaker at a constant rate. Then of course, a clean beaker is placed under the condenser and the mass of the liquid collected in condensing time T is determined. So the specific latent heat is specific latent heat is obtained from electrical energy and the heat produced. So from the law of conservation of energy, all the heat that is supplied by the heater must be equal to all the heat that is used in the process of evaporating the water. Then because we are given the a voltimeter to measure the voltage and the ammeter to measure the current and of course the clock to measure the time, the heat, the electrical heat energy supplied by the heater will be given by the product of voltage times current times the time taken to heat that particular water. So remember electrical energy can be given by VIT. We did say that in our previous lessons. Then the heat of evaporation will be given by the mass of the steam multiplied by the uh, latent heat of vaporization. So if we want to find LV, remember our aim was to determine the latent heat of vaporization. So the latent heat of vaporization, which is noted by LV, will simply be given by making LV subject of the formula in this particular case. So to make LV subject of the formula, I simply divide both sides by mass of the steam. Therefore, LV will be given by VIT divided by the mass of the steam. 
So VH simply represents the voltage of the heater. The IH represents the current of the heater. Then time H represents the time taken for that particular heater to operate. Therefore, latent heat of operation will be given by VIT divided by the mass of the steam. Remember, in some questions, instead of being given the current and the voltage, you'll be given the power of that particular heater. So when you are given power, we also said that the work done or the energy can also be given by power times time. So if you are given the power, in that case, the latent heat of operation will be given by the power, that is power times time, divided by uh, the mass of the steam. Remember, the product of power and time will simply give you the work done or the energy, the electrical energy that is either supplied or gained. Next, we look at an example which reads that a copper calorimeter of mass 60 grams, so 60 grams into SI unit, which are the kilogram, will simply take 60 grams of 1,000 grams times 1 kilogram, so that will give me the mass of the copper calorimeter as 0 0.06 kg, that is into SI units is filled with 100 gram of water. 100 gram into SI units are simply divided by 1,000. So 100 gram of 1,000 gram times 1 kilogram and obtain the mass of water as 0 0.1 kg at 25 degrees Celsius. So that is the initial temperature for the water is 25 degrees Celsius. But because the water was placed in the calorimeter, so it means that the initial temperature for the water, which is 25 degrees Celsius, is equal to the initial temperature for the copper calorimeter, which is also 25 degrees Celsius, simply because initially they were in the same container. Therefore, the copper calorimeter will assume the initial temperature of water, which is actually 25 degrees Celsius. Then steam at normal temperature and pressure is passed through the water until a temperature of 45 degrees Celsius is attained. So that is a T final for the mixture is 45 degrees Celsius. So it is important to note that steam is usually, initially, steam is simply obtained by the boiling water. Then we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So if we are told that steam at normal temperature and pressure it simply means that the initial temperature for the steam was actually the boiling point for water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So the initial temperature for the steam is usually 100 degrees Celsius because the water will only start boiling to form steam. That is whenever it is heated to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So T initial, the temperature, initial temperature for the steam is 100 degrees Celsius. Then we are told that the final mass of the calorimeter and the content was found to be 163.5 grams. Remember, before steam was passed, the total mass of the calorimeter and its content, that is the water, was 60 grams plus 100 grams. So the initial total mass for the calorimeter and its content was the mass of the calorimeter plus the mass of water, which is 60 plus 100, which is actually 160 grams. But when we pass steam, the total mass of the calorimeter and its content, remember now the content is actually the calorimeter, the water, and actually the steam. So when we add steam, the total mass becomes 163.5 grams. So it means that the extra mass is simply represents the mass of the steam that has actually been added or that has been passed through that particular mixture. Therefore, if you want to find the mass of the steam, you'll simply take the initial total mass, which was 60 plus 100, which is 160, minus the total final mass, which is 163.5 grams. Therefore, 163.5 grams minus 160 uh, grams will simply obtain the mass as 3.5 grams. So this is simply the mass of the steam because it is the steam that has caused an increase in the total mass of the calorimeter plus its contents. Therefore, the mass of the steam is 3.5 grams. If I convert into the SI unit, which are the kilogram, I'll simply, we know that 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kg. What about 3.5 grams? So that will be 3.5 grams of 1,000 grams times 1 kg, which will give me 0 0.0035 kilogram as the mass of the steam. Then we are told to calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization for the water. We are given that uh, specific capacity of water as 4,200 joules per kilogram per kelvin and that of copper calorimeter as 378 joules per kilogram per kelvin. So from the law of conservation of energy, we know that heat loss must be equal to the heat gained. So obviously in this case, steam is losing heat and of course the substances that are gaining heat are the substances that have some smaller initial temperature. Like for the case of water, the water has an initial temperature of 25 
also copper cathode filter has an initial temperature of 25 but the final temperature of the mixture is 45 this simply shows you that both the water and the copper cathode limiter will be gaining heat because their initial temperature is smaller than the common final temperature of the mixture therefore we can conclude that the uh, actually the steam lost heat while the water and the copper cathode limiter they gained heat therefore heat lost by steam is given by so heat that is steam usually loses heat in two forms one we have heat lost by the steam which is actually heat that is lost in the process of condensation or in the process of converting steam back to liquid state then plus the heat that is lost by the water or the condensed uh, water that is the steam that has been condensed to water so heat lost uh, through the process of condensation is given by mass of the steam multiplied by specific latent heat of vaporization for the steam or simply mass of the condensed water times specific latent heat of vaporization for the steam then heat that is lost by the water that is the water that has already been converted that is the steam that has already been converted to liquid state or the heat that is lost by water from 100 degrees celsius up to the common final temperature of 45 degrees celsius will be given by mass of the steam multiplied by specific heat capacity for the water multiplied by the change in temperature for the steam so this will be given by mass of the steam of course is 0 0.0035 kg specific latent heat of vaporization is lv then plus mass of the steam of course is 0 0.0035 kg multiplied by specific capacity for the water is 4200 from the question then the change in temperature from 100 degrees celsius or from the steam up to the fine the common final temperature will simply take 100 degrees minus 45 degrees which will give us 100 minus 45 then the heat gained by water that is from 25 degrees to uh, 45 degrees remember the water it is the water and the copper catalimeter that are gaining heat therefore the total heat gain will be given by the heat gained by the water plus the heat gained by the copper catalimeter so heat gained by water that is from 25 degrees celsius up to the common final temperature of 45 will simply be given by mass of water multiplied by specific capacity for the water multiplied by change in temperature for the water so mass of water we have obtained it at 0 0.1 kg multiplied by specific capacity for the water is 4200 joules per kilogram per kelvin times change in temperature for the water from 25 to 45 degrees celsius will be given by the difference that is the larger value minus the smaller value so 45 minus 25 then the heat that is gained by the calorimeter copper calorimeter is given by mass of the copper calorimeter multiplied by change in temperature for the copper calorimeter times uh, that is specific capacity for the copper calorimeter so mass of copper calorimeter we have obtained it as 0 0.06 kg so 0 0.06 kg times specific capacity for the copper calorimeter we are given as 378 joules per kilogram per kelvin times change in temperature for the copper calorimeter is same as change in temperature for the water because they were initially in the same that is the water was initially in the copper calorimeter therefore the copper calorimeter assumes the same initial temperature as water therefore the change in temperature for the copper calorimeter will be 45 minus the initial temperature which was 25 remember you we usually subtract uh, whenever we are obtaining theta we usually subtract the temperatures in such a way that we obtain a positive value for the theta for example you cannot take 25 minus 45 because that will give us a negative value so to find a positive value for theta we'll take 45 minus 25 so 0 0.035 times lv you just obtain 0 0.05 uh 0 0.0035 times lv which is where lv is the specific latent heat of vaporization then if you take 0 0.0035 times 4200 you'll simply obtain 14.7 100 minus 45 will obtain a uh, 55 then 0 0.1 multiplied by 4200 you'll obtain 420 then 45 minus 25 you'll obtain 20 then 0 0.06 times 378 you'll obtain 22.68 then 45 minus 25 will obtain 20 so of course 0 0.0035 lv uh, it will just give us 0 0.0035 lv then 14.7 multiplied by 55 you'll obtain 808.5 then for 20 times 20 you'll obtain 8400 22.68 times 20 you'll obtain 453.6 then if i connect the like terms so i want to remain with a 0 0.0035 lv on this side so i'll take this term towards the right hand side so that i'll have 
8,400 plus 453.6 minus 808.5 so this one has crossed the equal sign that is why it is becoming a negative so if you take 8400 plus 453.6 minus 808.5 you'll obtain 8045.1 so lv will simply be given by 8 uh, 8045.1 divided by 0 0.0035 which will give us the specific latent heat of vaporization for uh, the steam as 2,298,600 joules per kilogram. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that you will never fail until the day you will stop trying. So the quote is reminding us that failure can only take place in the absence of actions. And what leads to the absence of action is actually fear. So provided that you are putting in the effort, provided that you are taking the right actions, you need to trust the process because in the end you are going to win so never lose the hope never lose uh that is never give up because uh provided that you are taking the right steps in the right direction you are going to win eventually therefore we should continue trusting the process despite the obstacles uh that may be stagnating our progress and lastly recall that winners never quit but quitters never win Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. In case you know anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly, kindly refer them to Kind Tuition Academy or simply share my link to them. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.